The curious case of hydroxychloroquine during the COVID-19 pandemic and the mysterious Surgisphere database. All of this coming up on the Watchlist series. Trial Site News was founded on a mission to make clinical research, including clinical trials, more transparent, accessible, and hopefully relevant for more of the public. At no time is objective, transparent research as important as it is during the COVID-19 pandemic. The stakes are incredibly high. With over 7 million cases worldwide and over 400,000 deaths, the objective truth is important, or better put, vital. So the hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine story and how controversial this anti-malarial drug has become. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, it seemed like an accepted standard of care. After all, why would major World Health Organization, or WHO, Solidarity Trial, major Oxford University Global Studies of Healthcare Workers, and COVID-19 just select it so early on? But then something exceptionally controversial happened. President Donald Trump declared the drug a game changer, one that could make a real difference. In fact, even later on after those statements were made, the American president acknowledged he was taking the drug. Since then, we have experienced a drug efficacy and safety roller coaster as one minute it possibly represents the answer, and the next minute it is to be feared, and then perhaps we wind up somewhere in between. To make a little more sense of all of this, Trial Site News reviewed all of its articles, as well as several others, and Wikipedia, to offer a timeline of the use of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine in the context of COVID-19 culminating with a strange case of the Surgisphere Quartz Clinical Database. So let's start then with the timeline. The start of the pandemic. Italian authorities supported the use of hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine. And by March 17th of this year, the AIFA Scientific Technical Commission of the Italian Medicines Agency expressed a favorable opinion on including the off-label use of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of COVID-19. Now, on March 19th, and the now controversial Donald Trump press briefing where the American president promoted the use of the drug as a potential SARS-CoV-2 treatment, he declared that the drug had been FDA approved very quickly while discussing COVID-19 treatments. Later on, however, the FDA shared that they hadn't yet approved the drug, but was in fact allowing use under the Compassionate Use Guidelines. Now, also claiming a game changer, the Trump comments led to massive shortages of the anti-malarial drug, with huge purchasing occurring not only in the United States, but also on other continents. What then followed can only be described as doctors and consumers hoarding the medicine. From March to early April, there is a run on the drug. Throughout March, there were many instances of doctors using off-label in the United States. In fact, doctors and dentists were writing prescriptions of the drug for themselves and family members, as reported by a few state pharmacy boards. The traditional patients for this class of drug, namely lupus patients and those with rheumatoid arthritis, were in some cases in a real bind as there were shortages of this drug. Now, while all of this is going on, on March 24th, a man died in Arizona, leaving his wife in critical condition as the result of ingesting product containing chloroquine phosphate designed for treating sick fish. They believed that the fish treatment could prevent them from contacting COVID-19. The substance for fish, however, was different than the chemical substance constituting hydroxychloroquine, and the man paid with his life for this mistake. Meanwhile, the US FDA issues Emergency Authorization, or EUA, to allow hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine phosphate products donated to the Strategic National Stockpile to be distributed and used for certain people who are hospitalized with COVID-19. And in anticipation of shortages, the FDA issued product-specific guidelines for chloroquine phosphate and for hydroxychloroquine sulfate for generic drug makers. And then, on March 29th, 
Trial site news reported on a large-scale WHO-sponsored solidarity trial, which included hydroxychloroquine in a global study. And by March 31st, we reported on the Oxford University COP-CoV study investigating the use of hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine on healthcare workers around the world, but primarily in Asia. So, the FDA started to hear reports then of heart-associated problems with the anti-malarial drug. And on April 25th, the American regulatory warned that due to risk of heart rhythm problems, the drug should only be used in a hospital or clinical trial setting. And then more trouble arose on April 29th, based on a preprint retrospective cohort study posted back on April 10th on Medrexiv of more than 320,000 individuals that were not infected with COVID-19, but had been treated with a combination of both hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin and published in an article in the Phase B Journal, which cautioned against this combination to treat patients with COVID-19 outside the context of a clinical trial. This was due to safety concerns and a lack of evidence showing it to be a benefit. However, the authors did suggest that the combination could be used to treat COVID-19 patients if new strong scientific evidence showed that the combination was beneficial and if there was no viable alternatives and the patients were monitored. Then, on May 18th, President Trump publicly admitted he was taking hydroxychloroquine combined with zinc and an initial dose of azithromycin during the COVID-19 pandemic. Enter the mysterious Surgisphere database and the Lancet decision. Now, by May 26th, the Lancet published a study based on a mysterious database from a company called Surgisphere. Interestingly, the Lancet uncritically vetted the study without asking any real material questions about the underlying data sources which the study was eventually then retracted by June 4th. However, the World Health Organization temporarily suspended the solidarity trials hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine arm due to this study. So, trial site news was introduced to Surgisphere upon reviewing the Patel paper. The Surgisphere studies, starting with one on ivermectin and COVID-19, were authored by a group of authors including Madeep Mehra, Amit Patel, and Sapan Desai. They based their studies on the Surgisphere Quartz clinical database first for an ivermectin study back in April. And then thereafter, the published hydroxychloroquine study that The Lancet and New England Journal of Medicine published without even a query into the origin and the nature of the data. Now, after reviewing the numbers and the underlying assumptions about the origination of the data, we at TrialSite News had real questions about this database, and the company, as did several investigators and researchers we discussed the topic with. Called the Patal Paper, we were informed by one prominent European researcher that the nation of Peru approved ivermectin for COVID-19 based on this truly questionable observational study. So, who is Surgisphere? Well, Surgisphere, a small, seemingly one-man operation out of Chicago, is founded and owned by a surgeon named Sapan Desai. Now, a science article delved into what can be described as some issues in the past with Desai associated with other business dealings. Apparently, Dr. Desai stopped practicing medicine to work on this company. Now, our red flags were up as well. How could a company with one or two people and no real presence have the time to collect data of over 1,000 of the world's major hospitals? We did some digging and found that they charged about $2,500 per year for access to their database. We started to wonder if this could be some sort of Ponzi-type scheme in that they claimed over 1,200 subscribers. Perhaps the benefit of having one sign up, pay, and then ask to share their data and the more that they share, the more the data becomes rich and robust. But we knew at TrialSite News that Surgisphere was not being straight with the world. Some of our principals have experience integrating electronic health record data in real time, and we knew what Surgisphere was claiming with this database called Quartz Clinical just wasn't feasible or practical to accomplish at all. But elite peer review academic journals published it anyway. With dubious data sets used for COVID-19 studies provided to both The Lancet and the New England Journal of Medicine, both of these discriminating prominent journals published the studies. But why? The data set from at least 1,200 hospitals claimed that patients taking hydroxychloroquine were more likely to die in hospital. 
How could major academic journals not question what we at TrialSite News questioned almost immediately? Was there some kind of agenda here? Was there desperation due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic? Or was there a political motivation? That remains to be seen. However, we were not alone at TrialSite News with our suspicions. Almost immediately on May 28th, a group of nearly 200 prominent researchers wrote an open letter to Richard Horton, editor of The Lancet, asking for the publication to investigate the surges here data sources. The letter stated that both the numbers of cases and deaths and the detailed data collection seemed unlikely. Moreover, Science Magazine found a number of problems and anomalies in the Lancet paper, including an astonishing number of patients involved and details about the demographic and prescribed dosing that seemed implausible. In fact, one of the signatures, Adrian Hernandez of the Duke Clinical Research Institute, noted that the biggest thing that raised the red flag was that there was such a large database across more than 600 hospitals, and no one had really known about its existence. Now, before this letter was sent out, TrialSite News contacted Surge's Sphere in an email questioning their sources. A spokeswoman responded to our inquiry, and by June 7th, Surge's Fear representatives responded to a series of trial sites news questions. The answers were vague and completely eluded our questions, centering on how they could secure so much data in real time from hospitals around the world. In effect, Surge's Fear avoided trial site news as questions altogether. Now, in the meantime, The Lancet and the New England Journal of Medicine released expressions of concern about the published study. But we must ask again here at TrialSite News, why? Why would these elite academic publications just publish the studies so rapidly, without doing due diligence? Didn't they see what we did, as well as those nearly 200 researchers? So, June 4th, the Lancet paper was retracted, as mentioned earlier, by three of its four authors, excluding author Desai, by the way. Now, in their retraction, they declared that Surgisphere had not transferred the full data set, client contracts, and the full ISO audit report to their servers for analysis, as such transfer would violate client agreements and confidentiality requirements, preventing reviewers from conducting an independent and private peer review. Moreover, the three authors noted that, we can never forget the responsibility we have as researchers to scrupulously ensure that we rely on data sources that adhere to our high standards. Based on this development, we can no longer vouch for the veracity of the primary data sources. Due to this unfortunate development, the authors request that the paper be retracted. So, prominent peer review journals uncritically accepting these studies based on a mysterious database of over 1,000 real-time hospital data around the world were then forced to retract the study, as did the New England Journal of Medicine. Additionally, WHO resumed the hydroxychloroquine arm of the Solidarity trial. Then, on June 5th, Peter Horby, Professor of Emerging Infectious Diseases and Global Health in the Newfield Department of Medicine, University of Oxford, and Chief Investigator for a randomized trial on hydroxychloroquine, said that the recovery trial has shown that hydroxychloroquine is not an effective treatment in patients hospitalized with COVID-19. Now, a search of clinicaltrials.gov reveals that there are still at least 186 clinical trials published an active that involved the treatment of hydroxychloroquine and COVID-19. We now know that for those trial participants with heart issues, that the drug poses risks, but it may still be safer for those that don't have any issues with heart health. We cannot as of yet, however, be certain. After all, there has certainly been a lot of confusion here, with the most elite of academic journals quickly accepting, uncritically, studies based on what are now known to be faulty data sources actually creates more confusion than clarity, even though they called for answers from the authors. But again, that was only after nearly 200 prominent researchers sent an open letter to The Lancet. These times are tumultuous in more ways than one. And we certainly hope here at TrialSite News that we can find as much objective truth as to what works and what doesn't, so that not only does science and medicine move forward during this public health crisis and beyond, but that also integrity, ethics, and intentions grow more honorable and driven to help humanity. From TrialSite News, I'm Adrian, and this is the Watchlist series.